I get a ton of complaints from real estate agents who are complaining about the leads that you get on YouTube. Now, this is something that's going to happen no matter what the lead source is. There's always gonna be an agent out there who complains about it. They're gonna complain that it's only buyers or it's only sellers or it's only this or that. And it's just a little bit ridiculous. And it's something that is really kind of getting to me because I do have a lot of realtors who complain that you only get buyers on YouTube. Now, this is not exactly true. Although yes, it can be very buyer heavy. I do know a couple of agents who are pulling in massive amounts of seller leads from their YouTube channel, and I'm actually doing that as well. When I first started, I was probably about 95 to 98% buyer leads, honestly. The first couple hundred leads that I received, I probably only had a couple of sellers in that mix. But over time, that has shifted a little bit. I'm probably closer to like 10 to 15% of seller leads out of the leads that I get from my YouTube channel. So that is starting to shift, and I think I'm going to continue to move in that direction as I continue to kind of pivot and adjust with my YouTube channel. Now, I love working with buyers, and in this shift, market, it's getting significantly easier. Let's be honest, guys. If you've had a home listing in the last couple of years, you basically just throw it up on the MLS, couple pictures, and you're going to get multiple showings, multiple offers, and probably sell for above the listing price uh, in just a couple of days. Well, those days are going to be long gone. I don't know what market you're in, but if you're experiencing the same type of um, inventory that we are, you're going to see the inventory is continuing to increase, showings are going down, and the number of offers and buyers are also decreasing in this market. So being able to pick up buyer market share from your YouTube channel, I think is incredibly easy and it's going to continue to get easier as the uh, real estate market potentially comes down in price and as we continue to see more people want to start to jump in as those prices continue to get a little bit more affordable. Now, there's a couple things that I really love about working with buyers. Number one, you don't have to negotiate commissions. When you go in and you list a house, you have to negotiate commissions with the seller. You potentially have to negotiate it with the buyer's agent, and it can be just a little bit of an uncomfortable process. However, with buyers, you don't really have to worry about that. You don't have that conversation, and most of the time, you're getting a two, two and a half, or 3% commission paid automatically, and that's already been negotiated based on the house that that buyer is going to purchase. So that's one thing I love about working with buyers. The second thing I love about it is once you get a good system in place, you can really get it leveraged to a point where it gets pretty easy to work with buyers. I've personally gotten to a point in my career where I could hand off a lot of the showings, a lot of the work with those buyers to my assistant or to different showing agents who are going to go out there and actually show the home to the client and then I will help them write up the offer. If you get a really dialed in system like this, you can be really efficient with your time and you can scale up to 10, 15, even 20 20 deals um, under contract as a buyer's agent. Now, this is something I've personally done, so I'm speaking from experience here. At one point back in March, I actually had 15 contracts going at one time in addition to other active buyers. This was before I hired my assistant, so I was actually in a position where I was doing most of this work myself, but because I had those systems so dialed in, I was able to be very effective with my time, very efficient, and be able to work with such a large amount of clients in just a limited amount of time. And why this really matters for you is if you're thinking about starting a YouTube channel, maybe you already have one, maybe it's already finding some success, you know, it really depends on how you adjust your positioning on YouTube. That determines what types of leads you're going to get. If you're going out there and you're filming the cheapest houses and you're filming, you know, hey, you can get this home for $100,000 or this one for 150 or you can buy this condo, you're going to attract a lot of buyers in that price range. You're gonna attract a lot of people who are only looking for that type of thing. However, if you go out there and you're filming million dollar houses, you're filming really nice homes, you position yourself as the authority and you have confidence in your videos, you're gonna be able to attract a lot of higher end clients from uh, your YouTube channel. This includes buyers and sellers. This is something I, again, I've personally done. Um, my average price point was actually below the median for our market, but after I started my YouTube channel, within just one year, my median sales price was actually $100,000 above what the median was for the market. So that's not only just because the market went up, of course, prices went up across the board, so everybody's sales price generally went up, but mine actually increased by over 100,000 because I was working with higher end clients based on the types of homes that I was showing. So the moral of the story is, look, don't be worried about the buyers you're gonna get from your YouTube channel. As this market continues to shift, you're gonna continue to see more and more buyers enter the market, and I think there's going to be a very easy opportunity to pick up on clients um, from your YouTube channel. It is going to be mostly buyers, at least in my opinion, but you're also gonna get a lot of sellers from that as well. Just make sure you have those systems dialed in, and it will get much easier to work with those buyers. With that being said, also make sure that you're putting out the content for the types of clients that you want to attract, right? If you go out there and you show only three three million dollar plus homes you're probably going to pick up at least a couple three million dollar plus buyers so that's something i'd definitely recommend if you want to focus on that niche definitely go after it just be careful with what type of content you're showing 
on your YouTube channel because of the type of content you put out there is going to be the type of client that you attract. With that said, guys, thanks for watching. Check out the description box below for additional information about how you can chat with me. If you're interested in joining us over here at Real Broker, I'd love to chat with you a little bit about that. Uh, you can reach out to me. I'd be happy to get you more information about this amazing brokerage, how you can earn two additional streams of income uh, just for being a real estate agent and just for selling real estate just like you do every single day. I'd love to chat with you about that. And with all that said, we'll catch you guys in the next one.